Gary Schultz from Cyclone Reef. Uh, we're going to do a tank tour of a, a guy in our club. His name is uh, Scott. His, his uh, screen name is Live Stuff. And uh, he's got a pretty nice red fish room, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi. Welcome to our home. How's it going, Scott and Wonderful, Amy? Amy. Come Thanks on in. Thanks for having us. Check this it is out. great. Okay, Scott. Tell us about your system here. How long you had it set up? Uh, this particular tank has been set up since about 2010. 2011, we started the site up. Um, it's 180 gallon. And it's been pretty steady all these years. I haven't had any major issues, but then again, I haven't gotten it to where I really want it to be full of coral and colorful, like you see a lot of other tanks and stuff. So I'm kind of at the point to where I'm really trying to ramp that up. I see a lot of soft corals in there. Do you have any acros? I'm not seeing any. Uh, I have some on the frag rack in the corner. Okay, park. okay, yeah, yeah. Some Duncans. You see the trumpets over here. I've had those for 11 years, starting with one head. Is that where I got my trumpet car? It may be. I think it's the same. I had a couple break, uh, a couple broke off a few years ago. Quite years ago. Yeah. Then this, this last spring, I so my. Uh, purple and green hammer coral up there on the top rock. Used to be a colony of about 300. Probably. That was a lot. All of a sudden, all of a sudden they, the rest of them, just, whew, I got two heads left. You know, I noticed with those, I had a couple heads like that, and they struggled and struggled and struggled for years. And then, uh, and it's probably been 12 years since I first got them. And they, they finally took off. Took yeah. off again? Yeah, it, it took that 11 years or 10 years to go from like five heads to that mass I had. <laughs> yeah, that was big. That was a big one. And then like the bubble coral in the center there, I got that, like I say, 10, 10 11 years ago from uh, a store up in Elk River. No longer there. And it's been doing really well. And probably one of the most coral in here I've had for many, many years. I guess I don't think I've just seen a bubble coral that had such a long stalk on it like that. Yeah, I you always see them like laying in a, on a rock and it's right there. There's no stalk. Yeah, that he just pee, like I said, it used to be about that, you know, a couple inches tall when I purchased it. and. It's growing, growing. It. So this is this is super quiet. I mean, it is dead quiet here. So everybody's gonna ask about these pictures you got on the on the um, hood. So well, my original plan of building the canopy was to uh, have some stained glass made, mm -hmm. you know, some fish with stained glass, and then I came up with the idea of having the kids just. Hey, why don't you guys drop some fish? My boyfriend daycare and my kids did some. And, uh, actually, I think most of them up there are our kids and one of our neighbor kids. And, um, and yeah, I stuck them up there. A year ago last fall, I decided to uh, move the fish. So then I got rid of the stuff that was in the playroom and just started working away at it. My fish roll. We gotta see that next. Yeah. Did you build the stand then? I did. Yep. Nice. Yep. It's just kind of cool that uh, there's nothing underneath. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It's it's made out of laminated two by six basically. Oh, okay. It's all laminated plywood. And and here there. on the front. Ah, that's all real oak. The, the 
veneering is, is, is actual solid oak. Okay. And that whole ins that whole uh, shelf system insert just slides right out, so I can get that. Any and all the plumbing. Oh wow! Plumbing. I've got adjustable valves. Back behind. But I got valves. So this whole thing pulls forward. Yeah, this whole area has to, from here here to, to the shelf will just slide out. Wow! And then I've got you know doors on doors on the other side. What's in there? Fish food. This, uh, yeah, yeah. Some fish food, and some of the old controller stuff was in there. Just junk collector. Yeah. Oh, I see. So there's a there's a there's a gap back there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's just. <laughs> yeah, you'll see all my leaks. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You hit your crate jig there, huh? <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I made the doors and everything. I, I did everything. Nice. So, but yeah, it's just this laminated. So, this is laminated. Two bias. Huh. I mean, they're, they're way stronger than any two by, regular two by four, so. Yeah. And then I still have my old uh, Reef Keeper Elite running a bunch of stuff but otherwise I've upgraded or added another uh, controller as an Neptune system. Okay, yeah, I suppose you, you got to have the MP10s up here or 40, MP40, yep, MP40s, right? yep, yep. Because uh, the cord's so short. <laughs> oh yeah, well uh, there's one in the middle and then one on the far end and I had one right right in here but I didn't like it sticking out. Oh yeah. So I threw a tunes in right out. there and but so I've got it. So oh, that's cool. Yep. Is that the reef keeper then? Nope. Uh, this is the reef keeper. Okay. This is the apex, and this is the, the fan control. Oh, I see. So it'll you can adjust the temperature. Uh, there's a probe hanging down. You kind of see it there on the other side of the first. Oh yeah. It's a, just a temperature probe when it hits set temperature. The fans come on, and they're located in the middle in the back. Over there on the, on the top. I'm gonna stand up here too, and then just do the grapes. Mine probably won't show it good. <laughs> yeah, it's really, uh, it's a really slick deal. It works well, they're, they're quiet, relatively quiet. There, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Why am I glad you could cut and edit? <laughs> yeah, well, that's. And, and fill in, and fill in voice. And, yeah. Explanation. <laughs>
So that, that pop that right there. Yeah. All right, run, run out the apex. It turns it on and off, and it just circulates hot water through that coil that's in the sump. Oh, I see. So it's a separate system. Yeah, separate system. So the hot, the hot water from the hot water heater goes through that coil, heats it up, and sends it back. So then those two gauges up there, I can, I got 120 degree water going into the sump, 80 degree water going back to the heater. So I know I'm not going too high. I'm not sending too hot water back. Is it a special hot water heater? Just no, it's my domestic. Really? Everyday use hot water. Wow. What a great idea. Is that cheaper then? I mean, That's the heaters are what cost you on these things. For so I got that pump free off a job. Yeah. It was, I took it out, out of a job. I was getting demo. That's right. You're a plumber though. That's a $400 pump. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's a $400 pump. So that was free. So that runs on three watts. Where the heaters are, you know, when they cut kick on it's a thousand. So so um So I, I built that APS. See this is where you guys came too early. You guys gotta build it, finish off my really nice top. Oh, oh yeah, you got it enclosed with plastic. Yeah, just to keep you down. Yeah. So the tank water is coming back. Uh, oh, you're pumping it up through nope. to this, or tank water comes down through through here. This one, this one, and this one here. So then it goes over, splits up to the ATS evenly. Yeah. And then comes down here and here as just residual. So I can I can have water movement, but yet I can control, can control what's going through the ATS. I see. Which I I made this a few years ago. Oh, cool. Yeah. Looks pretty. Yeah, I got it. Pretty full of nerf algae there. Yeah, I just got the one light going on the one side right now. That's a good size. And then I had uh, I had custom uh, Midwest acrylics build this one last uh, this last spring, not last spring, year ago. This filter rack thing, or the I, whole thing? Yeah, I know the, the tank itself, and then I came in and I, I built the filter rack. Okay. And I built everything for the, uh, the heating coil. So you still got heaters in here, I see yep, though. Backup. Huh? Backup. Oh, okay. Backup heaters. I see. Yeah, just had a little, little bit more on temperature. Now the, the power head in the corner here, why is that? Uh, it just stirs up any detritus in the center. Oh, I see. It sends it back up once it's it. Yeah. Just in that one chamber. And then, what's going on here? Uh, so this this is the heat. Uh, these are uh, dosing. Oh. Top off, and then alkalinity, calcium, and then a spare one for the magnesium if I ever decide to. Oh, okay. Actually, hook it up to a pump. And this guy is just a spigot here. Yeah. So that little. So I had my auto feeders sitting right here, mm -hmm. and then I had a tube just to swirl water into there. Oh. But it wasn't working very well because it sent the food up, and it would get stuck in the system somewhere. Oh. And it would pop up in there. Huh. So I'm not sure what. So you were feeding from down here. Yep, yeah, because uh, my return pump uh, is a pipe, you know, is the bulkhead in the corner there. Yeah. And then my return pump is actually stuck. It's right there. Oh, I see. It's even quiet in here. Oh, that's a big return pump. Where is that? Uh, it's a uh, yeah, it's open. Yep. <laughs> wow. This is small. This is a swimming pool pump then. Yeah. But you know what? That one over there ran for 11 years straight and not a lick of stick of problem. Yeah, yeah. Didn't do it 24 7. Never turned off. Huh. For 11 years. Cool. Yeah, so I I gave it a shot again. And then I had, had the, uh, Chris up there at Midwest uh, making a uh, 
Jurassic Park. Né? Oh yeah. It's really bright in there, despite that there's no light in there. It's funny. Yeah. Right? Just from the room. You know? Yeah, there's a foil around it. Yeah. It gets a little chilly down there. Does yeah. it? Uh, I don't know. So, what's this over here? Well, Reef Supply signed plaque. Yep, signed, uh, signed, uh, uh, poster. Oh. I know, it's like, I don't know, about 40 years ago when we were teenagers, it'd be like a den of antiquity, that's what my dad would have called it. <laughs> my wife's like, now you're getting too lazy to go to the drive. <laughs> what do you got there? Hi, well, I see I got some uh, folder brands. That's true, I got a uh, non-alcoholic painting, I got a vanilla, a Florida. Oh. Can I have a Corona? I'm get around this way. Okay, so here's your apex and lots of outlets up above. This whole room is on a dedicated 20 amp breaker. Now if you look behind you, kind of to the right, around the panel there, that's all my time. Oh wow. Right, right back here too is all my Oh I see. Well you really have everything nicely organized, don't you? That granite that granite came out of a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice that it was granite until you said that. But yeah, that came out of the dumpster. You had to cut it here though. Yeah, I cut it. I did all the cuts. Yeah, except that front face one. That was the finished part of it, so I like your your whole testing thing here is pretty sweet. Look at this guy. And this is your RO right here? No, it's the little blue one is RO of the eye. And then that, the other one is tank water. This is comes out of the that's, tank? Yeah, that's tank water. And then the other one next to it is uh, the blue tube. That's RO of the eye. Oh, I see. And then the valve above it adjusts. This adjusts to the flow through the carbon. And then this right here, when I want to do a water change, I just open this up and it goes to my drain. Right here. Really? Nope. Wow. I can, uh, yeah, so I just, I turn on my fill station, fill pump and my water room. It fills that up and then I just open that up and let it out. Well, doesn't your wife just hate washing clothes in this room? <laughs> Nope, nope. That is a dedicated washer dryer. Just for your fish stuff? Just for those. I got. It's two hundred. It's three hundred dollars. Yeah. So just for washing your your yep. filters? Yep. I wasn't gonna throw them in my other one. Well, I got these. I wash these. They're big filters. Okay. You're the only guy I've ever known with a dedicated washer oh, no. machine. There's guys. There's other guys. So I think this. it's perfectly. I won't tell your wife. Don't worry. Oh no, she knows. <laughs> It's, it's funny, on my wife's, uh, or my, my son's graduation party, some of my relatives came down, but uh, this wasn't done, it was my old fish room. Yeah. And she saw the washer and washer over there and goes, you don't make your wife come down here and wash clothes, do you? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I, I might be a jerk, but I'm not an a -hole. <laughs> I can't believe this room. I have never seen such a thing. So what are these little valves over here? That's my RO, so I can turn it to fill in the salt mixing tank or my RODI tank, three-way valve. This is just the bleeder valve where you want to bleed before you uh, start the water. And same with this, it's just the uh, restrictive valve. TDS meter. Huh. So. That whole panel's hinged there too, isn't it? Oh my gosh. You got a lot of stuff squirreled away down here. I do. See, this is my old. This this is why I put my fish room over here because I got tired of going under this. <laughs> this was my old fish room. Oh my gosh! So now it's just storage in here, huh? Uh, 
storage in our old FBI. Oh section. yeah, look at this. Wow. So my 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 uh, AT or my uh, sump used to sit right there. So my sump used to sit right there. That plywood there used to extend all the way over to here. And uh, so that was a separate room. So this tank here is what? Brand new. That's new with this new fish room. That's RODI water there. Okay. Uh, this is where I mix mix salt. So I can, I can pump water out of that into here or there or both. And then I just I have the little uh, pump circulated. I actually have uh, I've got the filters, the bulk or the canister filters behind here. No. Yep. So I filter it then as it's mixing. I test and weigh it to fill it in and. And there's a sink back here too. Yep. Well, this like I say, this used to be in my fish room, so I had. I put oh. this in at that time. I, it's, it's an amazing use of space. Here. I was going to take it out, but I just I didn't want to take it out. So, but yeah, it's it helps if you're a plumber. To do it it. kind of does. This is a good hobby for a plumber, really. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I do the plumbing. I do the electrical. I do. I did the floors. So this. So you're you're heating this one. Nope. Which one gets the heat? That one. The mix. Uh, yeah, I got I've just got a drop in heater and in, into here. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah, these. Yeah, right there. uh, there's, yeah, this one here. This is this is for this tank, and there's another one for the other tank. And I put put the my other uh, Ecotex there to to good use mixing my salt up. It actually, works really well. Yeah. Yeah, I can crank it up and then I can turn it down and just. So no. You're the only guy with a MP40 on his mixing tank. Salt mixing yeah. tanks? I'll tell you what, though. I happen to have a few laying around. But... Yeah, well, I, I went with the quiet drives up there, which I don't regret. Yeah. So I moved these down here to just use them. I mean, I just I sit them around. But I don't... Uh... So that's a check valve right there? Yeah. Yeah, just so I don't get pump water back into, into that. Oh, I see. Sure. Wow. Yeah, so I can I can divert it. So you know, it's just a matter of turning the pump on. I can circulate it through that filter, or I can just have it just circulate just to mix through just through nothing. Or uh, I can turn the pump on and crack this open, and then it goes right to the tank. Mm-hmm. Really? Yep. So the, oh, there I see. There's a uh, looks like a Iwaki yep, something Iwaki, there. Yep. 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 Yeah, my, uh, my nice little yellow guy can uh, pan motor quick. Yeah, I, I, had, parts. I had some trouble with one of those too at one point. So I've got a little, I want to get that set up out there sometime. Oh, yeah. I've got a little all in one. Yeah. So I want to get that set up out here just so you have a tank down here. You know, like you had your tank. Well, your your tank was in your fish. Room. Yeah, yeah. I spend a lot of time dorking around down here. Yeah, and you can't see the tank because you're down here. Right. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little different down here. So when I first met you, when you came to our house one time, I thought, how come that guy's jeans always have worn out knees on? <laughs> now I know why. <laughs> you never thought that. I want to lose my pocket. It's my money flying out of it from this hobby. <laughs> It's burning a hole in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> this is really a... You worked on this for a long time, and it wasn't easy, right? Because, like, cutting all these pieces of wood, you can't, like, cut them in this room very easy, right? I mean, or would you use a skill saw down here? Uh, I did, uh, yeah, I just had a skill saw down here. But, so, it's actually dirt floor. Oh, it is? So, but when I made it to the kids' playroom, I very... Two by fours. It's all awesome. Yeah. I break two by fours and put plywood over the top. Of it. Okay. And uh, had, th had this carpet carpet down here for kids room. Yeah. But then obviously I'm not gonna have carpet in the fish room, so I pull that up. And got this stuff at a you know, local big box store. Oh, the cars. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. This. 
That's like one of our favorite fish that we're afraid to have right now because um, we have them at the top. Obviously. I'll show you one more little thing here. This is kind of slick. This is my little work table. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> It's great because it's a coffee table too. Yeah, yeah. $25, $25, $25 for this set. And you just cut, cut the lights. lights off, put wheels on it, re strip, the, strip the paint off of it, stained it. Corian. Yeah, Corian. Pretty nice. Yeah, <laughs> you know, talk about it. I bet you have stuff inside there, don't you? Oh, yeah, I can show you. Oh, it's the drawer, okay. It's not the drawer, it's drawers, tools, and... The dra uh, these actually came off, out of, uh, off a job, the drawer's dead. You know, yeah. it's a separate cabinet, I just stole the car hardware, remodified the drawer, and put it in here. There you go. <laughs> it didn't, you know, the sink was free, I had to buy a faucet. That's a nice sink to be free. Yeah, it is. I always wanted to do a sink like that in our yeah. basement. Except being a freebie, it pulls water right here. Oh, it does. Um, uh, hence, hence the squeegee. Yeah. <laughs> but the sprayer works great. Wow. Uh, works nice for uh, spraying uh, filters off. You didn't clean this place at all. Before nope, we came over I, here, I, I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said that to me once. I, I asked the guy if he, if he had just cleaned it or something because it looked so good. And David Grigger goes, Gary, don't you know that everybody cleans for a week before a meeting? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was my job today. And then you guys think, yeah, it's fine that you came early, but it's like I did a really, I did a little bit yesterday, but I was going to really get clean. Looks pretty good to me. You remind me of that guy at House on the Rock. You ever been to the House on the Rock? <laughs> He's got all kinds of stuff scrolled away everywhere. I put these up here. I got stuff sitting up here. You yeah. as well use it. Well, yeah, you got the space here. You know, it's like if you had, I mean, if it was a dirt floor, it'd be worthless. You wouldn't even want to store things in here, you know? Yeah, well, I, I started stuff in here when I first moved in. You know, I, there's plastic on the floor or and, and wood pallets and stuff, but I've lived here long enough, I've never had an ounce of water down here. Like something, the laundry is bone dry. And I don't worry about it. I put bleach in the first load with them, I wash them a second time, and sometimes I'm like, I kind of worry about there being a smell soap. after. Soap, just um, soap. Yeah, well, that's why I run them through two cycles, just to hope that. Well, then I don't want my clothes to smell like fish stuff. Right. It's pretty nasty. Yes. So you got the washer through that door. I got the washer yep, through the through the. Oh, oh yeah. That had to fill up that whole opening there. Um. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to get it out in five years when it craps. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be older and go. Oh boy. Go over. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is where you're putting the big tank. Oh wow. There's uh, there's our oh. lizard there. Oh, it's a big there. one. Oh. It's it's different. It's not an iguana. What is it? Yeah, it's a red tegu. Okay. Yeah, he's uh, he's about four and a half feet long. Wow. That is so cool. Yeah. And that's your son's bed. Yep. He yeah, sleeps on top of the lizard. Yep. Wow. We were pretty impressed with Scott's fish room there. He took a crawl space and turned it into a pretty great spot to have all of his uh, aquarium gear. And it was just really impressive what he did with that space. Uh, the man has obviously got some talents there. So, um, anyways, we appreciate that. And uh, thanks, Scott and Amy. And, uh... Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next time.
Well, we've spent a lot of time talking about the ATS and the plans are still out there and available for sale. Thank you everyone who's purchased them.